What is up ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 12 of Onshape. Today specifically we're going to look at some holes and some clearance holes. Now as a quick caveat, this video will not cover threaded holes or tapped holes just because the when you do them on Onshape they're not necessarily modeled the way I'd like them for them to be or can find a way. And so I'm going to do a little shortcut method on how they look modeled but they're not actually modeled. And so we're going to cover our through holes, counter bores, counter sinks, and then how to dimension these appropriately. Okay, so let's go ahead and get on started there. What I'm gonna do first though is, if you wanna make this part along with me, I'm gonna go ahead and, let's figure out, nope, there we go, sketch one. I'm gonna go ahead and allow you to just either draw this uh, image down real quickly, take a screenshot, whatever you need to, that way you can reference it as we're working through it. But I'm ready to go ahead and get on started. So I'm going to click on the plus sign, create new part studio. And we're going to go ahead and on our front sketch right here, we're going to add, insert this image. Now I've already have this image loaded. And let's go ahead and just off to the side, let's throw that image right on over there. Okay, that's looking good so far. So I'm going to go ahead and finish on that sketch. We're going to create a new sketch on this front plane. Right click, view normal 2, and then hit C for circle. And that dimension of that circle is going to be 4 inches. Putting in C for circle, D for dimension, and then we're going to call that done. I'm going to go ahead and make all my planes that I know I'm not going to be using right now, make them invisible. That way I don't accidentally select on them. Now I'm going to click on extrude. We're going to extrude this back 1.5 inches. Okay, so now we got, we've got our disc. Now let's go ahead and put our points for our holes uh, to make our uh, specific points where our holes are going to be. So I click on the sketch, we're going to click on this face, right click and view normal too like we usually do. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a single point. You can kind of, if you hover over the center of the circle and drag straight up, on shape it does a pretty good job at predicting what you want it to do, and it's going to throw in this vertical constraint. I'm going to kind of eyeball it, but then hit escape on my keyboard, D for dimension. And this dimension right here, this distance, the whole diameter of the circle is 2.5 inches but I want that radius. So I'm just gonna type in 2.5 divided by two, and it does the work for me. It's a calculator, all right? The, the harder you make on shape work, the less you have to do your work yourself. Next I'm gonna do is click on circular pattern, click on this hole, and then now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this repeat five times about that center, and then click, left click on our mouse anywhere, and we've now got five points for us to put our holes in, just like on over here. Okay, so we're going to finish this sketch. I'm going to click on hole. And then I can now click on one of these points to do what we need to do. So I'm going to click on, let's do click on hole again. Click on this top hole right here. This top hole has a through clearance of point, a diameter of 0.25. So this diameter right here is going to be 0 0.25. And it's going to be all the way through. So we got simple, simple hole, through, and then it's 0 0.25 diameter. And then we click done. If you rotate around the back, we're looking good. So next all we're going to do is this counter bore. But you notice my sketch of my points have disappeared. And so what we've done is we've consumed a sketch but we can make it visible again by just clicking on this visibility icon and you see my points pop up again. So I'm gonna click on hole, click on the second hole right here. It's going to be a counter bore. It's going to have a inside diameter or the, the thread part is going to be 0 0.375. My outside diameter is going to be 0 0.75. And the depth of that bore is going to be a quarter inch, 0 0.25. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate around to see if it looks how I need it to look, and that looks okay. 
oh, we've got our second hole done. How do we do our countersink now? So click on hole again. Notice my sketch is now visible all the time, so my points don't necessarily uh, disappear anymore. So we're going to do a countersink. That inside diameter is still going to be 0 0.375. It's going to be a through. The, the outside diameter is going to be 0 0.75 with an 82 degree bevel. And that looks okay. And it's through as well. We're looking good, ladies and gentlemen. So now let's go ahead and do um, this odd hole here. And if you notice, it says one quarter inch, 20 count UNC 1B with a depth of 0 0.75. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do simple because it's not a counter bore or counter sink. We're going to do a blind hole because uh, a through hole goes all the way through. This one only goes halfway. So that outside diameter is going to be a quarter inch. So, but we are gonna choose a and SI or ANSI. I don't know which one's which. Maybe you can tell me down in the comments about do people pronounce this ANSI or is this ANSI? All I know is that this is standard inch. And so the hole type is going to be tapped, and that's because this is a threaded hole. That's what all of this configuration means right here, that this is a machined hole. The size on it's going to be a quarter inch. 20 right here represents how many uh, total threads per inch. So if it was more of a, a precise machine tool, it would be, of course, higher threads per inch. So we click on 20, and then we can put in the rest of our information here. So that, that uh, outside, or the, sorry, that depth is gonna be 0 0.75, okay? Now, uh, what it's gonna do here is, it's gonna run into a little bit of some interesting problems, is that I have not been able to figure out how to specifically get this to model the way it needs to model. So we've, we've put those dimensions on the hole, we kind of done everything as expected, but for me, this is just a clearance hole. It's, it's, there's nothing I can see. And so what I've done with a little bit of research, um, now very brief research, is that there's you have to model those threads if you need them. And so right now, those holes are, it has the dimensions in there, but you don't see them. And that's the way I think it is, is because since this is a browser-based environment, that detail is not necessarily for the model, it's necessary for construction. So I'm not too concerned. And so but what I'm gonna do is, what if we just want it to be there? What if we want it to look like it's there? I found out if we do the helix, click on helix, click on the inside of this, give it a denote, annotation of clockwise versus counterclockwise, and then revolutions. So we said 20 threads per inch, this is, uh, 0.75 inches inwards. So that means it should be, if my math is correct, 15 revolutions. And that looks, from the eyeball's view, looks like a pretty decent thread count. This is just a way for me to say, okay, these are clearance holes, this is a thread hole, that's what I'm gonna call it at for now. I'm gonna do a more in-depth video on making a bolt and a nut showing how to do specifically those modeling things. But like I said, I don't think it's necessary for the 3D modeling environment. We just wanna show the part and how it works. So let's click on sketch, or sorry, let's click on hole again, and let's do our last hole. Now, unfortunately on this drawing, uh, the last hole does not have a dimension. So we can just make whatever you want. So I'm gonna do a simple hole, let's do through, and let's go back to custom. And I'm gonna eyeball it. That looks like to me to be a 0 0.25. No, let's do 0 0.5. That looks about right. Looks like a half inch through hole, and that looks okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that'll be it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to throw them down in the comment section. I will get back to it as quick as I can. If you like these videos, you wanna stick around, make sure you like and subscribe. Definitely helps me out and lets me know how my videos are doing. If you need anything, let me know. And if not, I will see you in the next video.